Let's talk about the iPad keyboard for a moment and about a couple of things that could happen. For example, your iPad screen is split in the middle or it's just floating in the middle of the screen or it just doesn't show up. I mean, there are plenty of things that I would like to clarify in this video, so let's begin. First of all, if you open up iPad and you just get to the keyboard, no matter what you do, there are a couple of options. Depending, of course, on your version of the operating system, but unless you have like some really old iPad, you should be able to make it work. So if you just go, for example, to Safari, you can see the regular keyboard pops up. So if you use two fingers, you can split it and make it go to the one side and to the other. This is a good idea to do so just because when you're using the iPad, and holding it in both of your hands, you can use the two of your thumbs to simply type whatever in and you don't have to stretch your fingers all over the screen. This is very useful. But you can also, for example, grab the keyboard like this and make it go up or down. That means that when the keyboard is already split, you can even make it go up on the screen. You can make it go um, anywhere you want. I mean, in case you would find it more comfortable, I don't really see a point in doing that, but you can do it. Plus, if you just pinch back, you can just make the keyboard go back and it can still stay up or down. I mean, you can still move the keyboard up and down whether it's split or it's not split. And if you pinch in one more time, this tiny little keyboard pops up and this is the floating keyboard that you can move around the screen freely. So you just grab the thing underneath it and you can move it around and bring it whenever you want. So the thing about it is that you can even make it go and make it stay in the middle of the screen, which looks kind of weird and funny, but you can do it this way as well. That is here in order for you to make it comfortable. Again, for example, you want to bring it to, to the corner and simply use one thumb to type. That may be useful for some people, I guess. By the way, guys, if you are new on this channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next uploads and the next videos where I will be talking about similar things and things you may be interested in. So make sure to stay around, make sure to subscribe and let's continue with the video. OK, and in order to bring it back, just pinch out again, make it uh, make it bigger and now you can do whatever you want with it. Plus, the gesture to move the cursor around still works, no matter what type of keyboard you are using. So if you just grab two fingers, you can just move the cursor around and you, you can use that, whether the keyboard is split, whether the keyboard is small, it does not matter. You can use it all the time. If you ever find it difficult or you don't remember all of the gestures, it does not matter because in the lower right corner there is this button which when you tap it, it's going to make the keyboard disappear. But if you hold down to it, you get the option so you can undock the keyboard which means that it's just not going to be connected to the lower portion of the display. You can make it split just by tapping one button or you just make it make it float very easily. So there is that, you can just just do it with the click of a button. You don't have to perform any gestures to make this kind of thing to, to appear. You, you just tap one button and it just does. The other gestures, for example, swiping down to get the other character only works when the keyboard is big. Naturally, on the smaller keyboard, this kind of stuff wouldn't work. But this works mostly for me when I type in numbers. This is the best use for it when it comes to my opinion. So you can use that. And of course, all of the other things work. For example, you can access emojis even on the small keyboard. This is kind of obvious, but yeah, you're not limited to anything when you use one keyboard over the other. It's like the same keyboard from the iPhone. You can see it's kind of small, but it's like the same code, same thing put to the iPad. So it can, of course, and will work normally. But one more thing on the small keyboard, you can really use the two, two thumbs or the two fingers to hold it down in order to move the cursor around because that will make the entire keyboard move around. Instead, you have to use the same gesture from the iPhone, which means to hold down to the space button. And now you can see you can move the cursor anywhere you want. This is kind of small difference, but I just had to mention it. Okay, this would be it. I hopefully did clarify the things and the problems that people have with this. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did it, then leave a thumbs up. That would definitely help me out. And you can subscribe as well so you don't miss future videos. Now, thanks a lot for watching and your support in this year. And let's hit the 100k at the next year. Thanks a lot for your support and see you guys later.